Hey lifers, Dustin here, and it's time for this week's Eliminator, where I take a quick look at the conference championships, mostly in the divisional races, and see who no longer is really a contender in that, and what the contenders have left on their schedule in order to help achieve their division, conference, and maybe national championship that was weird, national championship aspirations, as well as part two, where I talk about the teams that I think are still in contention for the national championship, as well as teams that uh, have been eliminated from bowl contention or are right at the brink of it. So let's get started first with the conferences. And as always, if you have any questions or you just want to give me your opinion, make sure to let me know down in the comment section. First, we're going to start with the ACC Atlantic Division, and really, it couldn't be any more simpler than this. Clemson has one ACC game left, and that is this weekend at Wake Forest. If they win that game, they go to Orlando. They are the ACC Atlantic Division champions for the second year in a row. If they lose, Louisville goes, because Louisville is finished with ACC competition as they have Houston this Thursday night. So, pretty much, it's win or kind of go home for Clemson as far as their ACC title dreams. In the Coastal, you got two teams also. You got Virginia Tech and you have North Carolina. Both teams have identical conference records, but Virginia Tech holds the head-to-head -head against North Carolina. So it's pretty simple. If Virginia Tech beats Virginia on the last game of the season, Virginia Tech will play probably Clemson in the ACC championship game. If Virginia Tech loses and North Carolina wins against NC State that same day, It'll be the Tar Heels in a rematch of last year's ACC Championship. Or, if as both teams did this weekend, they both lose, it'll be Virginia Tech going. So Virginia Tech controls its own destiny. A loss and a North Carolina win against an NC State team that finally battled back against Syracuse, but lost to Boston College. Uh, it could be bad for the, uh, the Hokies, so they definitely need to beat their in-state rival. Time to move to my favorite discussion in college football right now, which is the Big Ten East. And what Iowa did to the East is crazy. Of course, the Hawkeyes beat Michigan on a last-second field goal at home this weekend and really threw a wrench into the entire situation, specifically for Ohio State. Now, the Buckeyes, who, of course, lost to Penn State earlier in the season on a blocked freaking field goal in a kind of a fluky win, at least as, as far as the final score indicated, uh, they were really hoping that Michigan would win out until the game and then Ohio State would beat them. And then that would cause a three-way tie. Ohio State would probably have the tiebreaker by being the highest-ranked team. And they would be the representatives for the East to go on and face probably Wisconsin, if we're going to be honest. But now that Michigan lost, if Ohio State beats Michigan and Penn State wins out, it'll leave Penn State and Ohio State with 8-1 and one Big Ten records, which will send Penn State to the Big Ten championship game which is crazy. It doesn't seem to make any sense. When Michigan lost against Iowa, Ohio State kind of lost against Iowa because the only two teams that Penn State has left on their schedule are Michigan State and Rutgers, two teams who came into last weekend without a Big Ten win between them, and then their tickets to their games were going for less, like cheaper, than movie tickets. They were like $7 on StubHub. Those are the two teams that Penn State has left, and I really would like to think they're going to win out and go 10-2, and two, which causes quite a dilemma for Ohio State. So, for Michigan to get in, they still control their own destiny. For Michigan to get in, they need to win out. A win against Ohio State will drop the Buckeyes. They'll have to head-to-head -head against Penn State. Problem solved. For Penn State to get in, they need Ohio State to knock off Michigan, a head-to-head -head against Ohio State, and the Nanny Lions are in. And for Ohio State, they need uh, Penn State to lose. Which doesn't look great right now. As far as the Big Ten West, it is slightly more dramatic, I guess. Uh, you have two teams at 5-2 and two in Wisconsin and Nebraska. But you have three teams at 4-3. and three. And that is Minnesota, Iowa, and Northwestern. Here are, I think, the ways all of these teams can potentially win the West, uh, even though it's not uh, great odds for some of them. 
Let me know down in the comment section if I'm wrong about any of this or whatnot. I'm not great at math and I didn't like draw a map for this. I just kind of figured it out in my head and scribbled it down. For Wisconsin to win the West, they need to win out. Simple as that. For Nebraska to win the West, they need to win out and have Wisconsin lose to either Purdue or Minnesota. For Minnesota to win the West, they need to win out and have Nebraska lose their last two games against Maryland and Iowa. Iowa really needs Minnesota to win out and they need Maryland to beat Nebraska. And in like 500 to 1 odds, Northwestern can get in if Wisconsin and Nebraska lose out. So the two teams in the last two weeks combined with four losses. So good luck, Wildcats. Now in the Big 12, it is a three-team race between Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and West Virginia, with West Virginia having statistically the hardest chance to get there with three conference games left while the teams from the... I don't know what Oklahoma is. I almost wanted to say the Sooner State, but I don't know if that's right. Like, you know, Georgia's the Peach State and Florida's the Sunshine State. What is Oklahoma. I have the internet, and I can look it up, but I don't want to. But yeah, West Virginia has three Big 12 games left. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State each have two, and of course, Oklahoma State has already beaten West Virginia for their lone conference loss. For Oklahoma to claim their second straight Big 12 championship, they just simply need to win out, or to lose a game and have Oklahoma State lose another game, probably assuming Oklahoma State is the one that gives Oklahoma the loss. Oklahoma State would have to lose to TCU, which is feasible because the Big 12 is insane. Oklahoma State just needs to win out. They will have a head-to-head -head tiebreakers against both Oklahoma and West Virginia. So whoever wins that game, because they, will, they still have to play each other, they will have the head-to-head -head win. So Oklahoma and Oklahoma State both control their own destiny. As for West Virginia, they need to win out obviously, and have Oklahoma State lose another game, probably to Oklahoma. That will give West Virginia the head-to-head -head against Oklahoma, giving them their first Big 12 championship. As for the Pac-12 North, unless Washington loses this weekend to Arizona State, the Apple Cup will determine the Pac-12 championship game. National championship implications aside, the Apple Cup will determine who wins the North and probably who ends up hosting the Pac-12 championship game, although that, of course, could change. In the Pac-12 South, you have 6-1 Colorado, 6-2 USC, and 5-2 Utah. Now, USC already holds a win over Colorado, and they only have one Pac-12 game left this weekend against UCLA. Colorado and Utah will face each other at the very end of the regular season, which is a game that is starting to look like it could be a really cool rivalry going forward. And if Colorado and Utah stay at this level, could have real impact for years to come. Colorado has the toughest road ahead. They have to play... Oh, well, they're both at home, but it's Washington State this week and then Utah next week. Luckily, it looks like they're both in Boulder. At least that's what I have written down. Uh, so that's good. But Washington State is undefeated in Pac-12 play, which is something no one thought would happen after they lost the opening game to Eastern Washington. And, of course, Utah got as high as the top 10 or 15 this year. And if they lose to Utah, they are going to lose the South pretty much no matter what. So how do they do it? So for Colorado to win the South... And again, you can always correct me on, on this if I'm wrong. I've said some wrong things in the past. Uh, Colorado wins out. They're in. They're the only Pac-12 South team with one loss, so that's pretty simple. Or they need to have Utah lose and UCLA beat USC. This is the one I'm kind of iffy on. For USC to win out, they need to, of course, beat UCLA. They need Washington State to beat Colorado, but then Colorado to beat Utah. So they will be the only two teams with two Pac-12 South losses, and they will have the head-to-head -head against Colorado. As for Utah, who holds the tiebreaker against USC, they just need to win out, and they're in. And finally, for conferences, it comes down to the SEC. We'll start in the West, where number one and defending national champion and SEC champion, uh, two-time SEC champion Alabama, clinched the West. They're going to Atlanta. That's done. As far as the East, 5-2 Florida travels to LSU for some reason this weekend. Uh, and the other team that somehow got back into this was 3-3 three three Tennessee, who only has Missouri and Vanderbilt left on the conference. So, 
if Florida at five and two loses to LSU and Tennessee at three and three wins their two games against the only two SEC teams with one conference win, which theoretically they should do, but they also lost to South Carolina, so who knows? But if Tennessee wins out and Florida loses Saturday, Tennessee wins the East, which it seemed almost a given that Florida would win the East until so they lost to Arkansas. So good job, Razorbacks. So now I want to take a quick look at the National Championship Eliminator. And again, I didn't start this until two weeks ago. So if I don't mention your team, you're already eliminated. There is a slight chance that Google will decide that this could be an ad. So if so, I'll see you on the other side of the ad break. If not, I'll see you in a second. Welcome back. Hopefully that wasn't bad for you. Uh, so when we left off the Eliminator last time, which was actually two weeks ago, I had 16 teams that I thought could do it that were still in the running for the national championship. Well, if I had actually done my show last week, I would have eliminated Texas A&M, Florida, Nebraska, LSU, and Baylor because of their losses, whether they were just egregious like Nebraska's or it was just their third loss in LSU, and that's just not going to get you in the playoff anymore. At least until we go to eight teams. But this week, I also eliminated Auburn. They're the only team I eliminated, but I brought in two teams that somehow I either left off on purpose or I forgot to include because I thought they just didn't have quite the chance. And that was Penn State and Oklahoma State. Which brings our total up to 12 teams that I now think have a chance to win the national championship. I do not have them memorized, so I will use my cheat sheet. It is Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, Clemson, Washington, Louisville, Wisconsin, West Virginia, Oklahoma, Penn State, Oklahoma State, and of course, Western Michigan, because when you are undefeated, you are always going to make my list. As long as Alabama and Western Michigan stay undefeated, there's not much you can say about that. They're undefeated. Clemson, Michigan, Washington, Ohio State, Louisville, West Virginia, they only have one loss apiece. If you win out and you win your conference, uh, except for the case of West Virginia, if you win your conference championship game, there's an excellent chance you are in the playoff because some of those teams will have lost, and in most cases you will have beaten some of those teams along the way there or in the conference championship game. Winning out, nothing's guaranteed, but winning out definitely helps your resume, definitely makes you a better candidate, except Louisville, who, now that Clemson lost, I think that hurts Louisville more, which we just saw in the rankings that were released. I waited to shoot this until after so I could have the rankings, but it didn't really matter. Wisconsin, Penn State, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State uh, all have two losses, but still have clear paths to their conference championship game, or conference championship. And in the case of Wisconsin and Penn State, there's a chance those two teams will play each other for the Big Ten Championship game, even over a one-loss Ohio State. Louisville was really hurt in this situation because they lost to Clemson, who just lost a game, which hurts Louisville's resume. Uh, they have a game against Houston Thursday that doesn't mean nearly as much as it looked like it would mean back in September, after Houston has now lost two losses, including one to SMU. Uh, Chad Morris, former Clemson offensive coordinator's team, nonetheless. So Louisville is in dire straits of all of those one-loss teams. I think Louisville has the worst case to get in. Maybe West Virginia, but they will still have to beat Oklahoma and uh, have Oklahoma State lose in order to, to get in there. Because I can tell you, a Big 12 team that doesn't win their conference championship has zero chance of making the playoff at all. Now, I want to take a quick look at uh, some teams that have been officially eliminated from bowl contention. That means they have at least seven losses. And teams that have six losses this week that are in dire straits and have to win out. So, the teams that are officially eliminated, Power 5 teams, are Virginia, Iowa State, Kansas, Michigan State, Rutgers, Illinois, Purdue, Oregon, Oregon State, Arizona, and Missouri all of those teams are pretty wretched and make a lot of sense. Here are the teams this weekend you need to be watching out for in case they lose and they are eliminated from bowl contention. So, Syracuse, Boston College, Duke, Texas Tech, Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Cal, UCLA, who plays USC, good luck Bruins, uh, Vanderbilt and Mississippi State all are sitting at 4-6 and six after week 11 and all could be uh, bowl-less if they lose this weekend. So definitely make sure to 
kind of keep up with that. Bowl games are really important, especially some of these smaller schools. Like, Vanderbilt getting to a bowl game would be huge for them. Uh, Syracuse even getting to a bowl game would be big. Who would have thought Texas Tech, Notre Dame, even Mississippi State, UCLA, that they may miss a bowl? That's pretty crazy to me. So, I have rambled enough. This video is long enough. Now it's time for you. I want to hear what you have to say about all this down in the comment section. You can also shoot me a tweet and let me know what you think. Uh, what teams do you think are eliminated that I say still have a chance other than Western Michigan? I know most of you think they're done. I'm just saying they're undefeated. But more importantly, what teams do you think still may have a chance that I have already eliminated? Let me know down in the comment section. You can also let me know if I was wrong about any of those conference division winners, how they get there, their paths. There's a good chance I'm wrong on that, so definitely make sure to follow up on that. Thank y'all so much for watching. It means the world to me. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Every single one of those counts. You can also click the uh, red subscribe button right below this little panel in order to not miss any more of my college football content. If you enjoyed this video and want to watch another one of my college football videos from this week, you can click the box right there for my reactions on the top 25 playoff Especially Clemson, Michigan, and Washington. I don't know why I forgot about them. Maybe the playoff committee did too. You can click on that video and see where they ended up falling in the newest top 25 and my thoughts on it and the video down there. And I'm going to keep whoring this video out because I have yet to make anything not a ranking video for a little bit. But if you want to watch the Big 12 not expanding and my thoughts on conference expansion in 2016, click that box down there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. And as always, until next time. Hey lifers, Dustin here. And it's time for this week's Eliminator where I take a quick look at the conference championships, mostly in the divisional races, and see who no longer is really a contender in that and what the contenders have left on their schedule in order to help achieve their division, conference, and maybe national championship that was weird, national championship aspirations, as well as part two, where I talk about the teams that I think are still in contention for the national championship, as well as teams that Louisville goes, because Louisville is finished with ACC competition as they have Houston this Thursday night, so pretty much it's win or kind of go home for Clemson as far as their ACC title dreams. In the Coastal, you got two teams also. You got Virginia Tech and you have North Carolina. Both teams have identical conference records, but Virginia Tech holds the head-to-head -head against North Carolina. So it's pretty simple. If Virginia Tech beats Virginia on the last game of the season, Virginia Tech will play probably Clemson in the ACC Championship game. If Virginia Tech loses and North Carolina wins against NC State that same day, it'll be the Tar Heels in a rematch of last year's ACC Championship. Or, if as both teams did this weekend, they both lose, it'll be Virginia Tech going. So Virginia Tech controls its own destiny. A loss and a North Carolina win against an NC State team that finally battled back against Syracuse, but lost to Boston College. Uh, it could be bad for the, uh, the Hokies, so they definitely need to beat their in-state rival. Time to move to my favorite discussion in college football right now, which is the Big Ten East. And what Iowa did to the East is crazy. Of course, the Hawkeyes beat Michigan on a last-second field goal at home this weekend and really threw a wrench into the entire situation, specifically for Ohio State. Now, the Buckeyes, who, of course, lost to Penn State earlier in the season on a blocked freaking field goal in a kind of a fluky win, at least as, as far as the finals uh, have been eliminated from bowl contention or are right at the brink of it. So let's get started first with the conferences. And as always, if you have any questions or you just want to give me your opinion, make sure to let me know down in the comment section. First, we're going to start with the ACC Atlantic Division. And really, it couldn't be any more simpler than this. Clemson has one ACC game left, and that is this weekend at Wake Forest. If they win that game, they go to Orlando. They are the ACC Atlantic Division champions for the second year in a row. If they lose, 